Hello and welcome to another quick tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, I'm going to be covering five key things to know as you go ahead and set up the integration between Zoho CRM and Zoho Books. Um, if you do find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. And if you have any feedback or questions, please drop those into the comments section um, because we actually do try to read and respond to every single one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. So without any further ado, let us go ahead and jump on into the walkthrough. Um, so the first thing that you really need to know as you go ahead and set up the sync is how it actually works, right? So the scheduling of it, some of the rules of it, um, and the ways that it will actually impact the system once you turn it on. So a few key things that are important to know. Um, we'll jump down here into our marketplace and into Zoho Finance. We'll go ahead and set it up now. And so a few things to know about how it actually works. So the main thing that's being synced between CRM and books are going to be your accounts and contacts on the CRM side are going to sync over to books as customers with contact people. So if I create like a dummy customer, we'll see that it actually stores both a company name as well as a person's name who becomes kind of like the primary contact person for that account. So it's important to note that just because in CRM, they kind of split them into contacts and accounts where you have companies and people, whereas the UI inside of books makes it look a lot more like you just have the customer record with a contact person underneath it. So outside of just syncing the customer and account data, um, the other things that are going to be synced, and I'm doing air quotes here, are things like invoices, sales orders, estimates, uh, packages if you're using Zoho inventory. Um, and I use air quotes there just because the reality is they don't actually sync those into CRM. They display them in CRM underneath the proper records, but they still will technically live inside of Zoho books. Um, the last thing that is important to know, and as we go to the next steps, you'll see why this is important to understand, is that the sync happens every two hours and the CRM is the primary record of truth. So really important to know that, and it's a good reason that you want to standardize that updates are primarily made in CRM um, whenever possible to a contact or account so that once it syncs over to books, um, everything will line up nicely. And so now that we have a good baseline example about um, you know, what records are actually going to be synced in the integration, we can go ahead and actually get started in building it out. So I'm here inside of our settings. I'll go ahead and choose our demo account here for our connection. It's going to ask us a few key steps here. This is kind of our question or item number two that you'll need to determine is what exact data do you want to sync between the systems? And how do you want to process any conflicts? So to start, we're just going to choose to sync the invoices. This is a pretty simple books account. Um, but you can sync the invoices, expenses, subscriptions, as well as uh, packages and shipments that you might have running if you are using Zoho Inventory. Again, for us, we're just going to go ahead and start with invoices. Once we've done that, it's going to open up a section for us to determine what additional data we want and how we want to sync our contacts and accounts. So I'm going to go into our sync settings for those, and this will actually get us to kind of tip or item number two that we definitely want to consider, which is what exact records are we going to sync back and forth? And how do we want to process duplicates or conflicts if something is edited on both sides of the system, right? And so here, what I'm going to cover first is what modules need to be synced. Um, in essence, you can sync either just companies, just contacts or accounts and their contacts. Nine times out of 10, we're using the accounts and their contacts option. You can also choose if you would like to include contacts that aren't synced to any accounts. So this is applicable if maybe you have a B2B pipeline as well as a B2C, where you're selling to some people that don't have a company involved. 
Um, if you have a scenario like that, you would definitely want to include any contacts that aren't associated with accounts. Uh, we're going to circle back to the uh, which records need to be synchronized here. But the big thing I want to highlight because is an important one to understand is this conflict here, where if something is done on both sides, what do we want to do to the Zoho Finance Suites version of the record, right? So this is a case where maybe we update the website on file for an account in CRM. What should happen, right? Do we want to clone that record where we have a duplicate inside of Zoho Books? I would say pretty much never. We almost never want to choose this clone methodology. Option two is to overwrite, which would mean that the website field from CRM is going to overwrite the record inside of Zoho Books and apply it there. That's kind of our most normal path. Nine times out of 10, we're doing this overwrite option so that we're able to standardize these updates happening in CRM. And then we know that the data inside of Zoho Books is always going to be accurate. And then lastly, you could choose to skip those records. Um, this would really only be the case if you had a pretty wily sales team and a very um, you know, disciplined accounting team, or maybe the accounting team wants to maintain their set of data. You know, We wanna have the same contacts and accounts in both places, um, but maybe we wanna make sure that nothing from CRM is going to overwrite the data in books. Um, if maybe the accounting team is very detailed about how they track certain things, um, then you might wanna choose to skip that. Um, but that kind of sums up, I think, our second tip here, which is essentially how we want to determine what modules are going to come in and the implications of choosing these, as well as determining how we want to process any conflicts that we might have if data is different in the two systems. And so with that, I think we can jump into item number three here, which is essentially once you have the core settings configured, um, you can actually make a decision around what data within those modules should sync over to Zoho Books. And that's what we're going to use this which records need to be synced option for, where here we can essentially choose from our custom views inside of accounts and contacts. And I'll show you how to make those here and say that only certain records should be included. And so I'll show you what I mean. So inside of an account, I can go ahead and open up our module. And we've got just a bunch of demo data in here. So if we look at one of these accounts, you know, we might want to say, you know, only certain types of accounts should come in, maybe only accounts in a certain industry, right? So we see a good example might be this account type, right? Where we only want to pull in where account type is customer. You know, maybe we don't need suppliers to be set up inside of Zoho Books as a customer record. So if we wanted to do that, we could just go ahead and create a new custom view. I'd call it customer accounts. Give it an account type. And then I can go ahead and save that. Now, again, this is some demo data here. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have anything in this customer accounts view. Um, if we want to go ahead and maybe just make a couple of these records into customers, then I can show you what that will look like. So let's grab these ones. I'll give them a quick mass update and make them into customers. All righty. So now if we jump back into our customer accounts view, we'll see that we have a couple of these records. And so the implication here is really just if you want to keep your accounting system clean, like a lot of people might say, you know what, I have accounts in here, but they're prospects, and I don't want them to show up in my system of accounting. That is where you would want to apply one of your filters, right? Where we can go ahead and say that not everything should be pulled in just because it's an account in the system. So now that I've refreshed that, we see our view here. I'll go ahead and just set up a couple options here. And now we've kind of set up the core things that we need to determine, right? Which is what accounts or what modules are going to sync over, what's going to happen when there's a conflict, and which records within those modules need to be synchronized. Um, and so with that, what we'll do next is actually jump into a review of what, how you go about mapping what fields should show up in those two systems and a couple of the implications there. Alrighty, so now we have kind of finalized some of this initial setup here. We're ready to get to item number four on our list, um, which is actually determining what data should sync between these accounts. And so 
we'll see here down at the bottom, we have some fields that we can map, right? And so we've got company name, which is going to default to be the same as display name, payment terms, price list, website. I mean, these are all going to be the default fields that are available within Zoho Books on the left here. And then on the right, we can determine what exact stuff should flow over to Zoho Books from these CRM accounts, right? And so here, we don't have a lot of custom fields, but really any custom field that you might want to add, you can just map through these settings. Um, so maybe we want to go down and say, you know, we have this remark section, we have it set up to be description, but maybe we want to change that to be something else, right? We can always do that here just directly through the field mappings. These can also be changed later. So if you change your mind or realize that there's an additional field that you want to add, you can surely do that. Um, and then the second piece is the data that flows to the contact persons themselves. Oftentimes, this is a little bit more limited, right? Where, you know, you might not need payment terms on every contact person. If it's already on the company record. Um, but good to just fly through these and make sure, you know, you might have statuses or types or industries that you want to have synced between the two applications. Um, and you can do that very easily, right? Just by coming into these settings and lining up each of the fields from the two systems um, and making sure that your data will map accordingly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and finalize this piece here. It's going to give me a warning that I'm going to overwrite data if I do this, but that is A-OK. -okay. And now that sync is going to be kind of running in the background and allowing us to sync those contacts and accounts between the two systems. The other one that you'll definitely need to do in here outside of, you know, vendors, if you if you want them to sync, you can, but uh, items and products are pretty important. So I'm going to go ahead and sync that here. And we'll go ahead and maybe map an additional field. If we have a type, doesn't look like we do. I mean, item category. So I can add any fields here, and then I'll go ahead and set that up to sync. And so now I'm going to go ahead and let this thing run in the background here. And then we will mark the Stuart, pull it out of the oven here in just a couple moments. And we'll get on to our last item to discuss. All righty. So now we can go ahead and pull this thing out of the oven. It has finished syncing between the two systems. I'll highlight a couple things I did offline. I did go ahead and turn on the vendor sync just so that it would be on and we could kind of see how it looks when everything is active. Um, and then we did go ahead and hide the native CRM inventory modules. Those are like their default quotes and sales orders and invoices. But really, most of the time when you're using these native finance records, you don't need those anymore. Um, and so with that, we'll get into our last thing to know and tip here for the CRM and books integration, which is how to use it now that it has been turned on. Um, so... Here we'll see under our accounts module in our customer accounts, we have these three clients. And on this side, we have them synced over. So if we look inside of a deal, and I've got one here spun up for quick copy printing, over on the left-hand side, we have a finance section now. And this only contains invoices because those are the only records that we have activated here in our demo account in books. Um, but otherwise, it would have your estimates and sales orders there as well. You go ahead and make a new invoice. Take just a second to spin up here. Just going to drop an item on it. Let's put a quantity of 10 or something like that. And we've got our invoice set up. Now I can actually save and send this directly from within the CRM. So I've gone through my save and send. And now it's opened up the ability here for me to actually email this out. Uh, I'll go ahead and send that. And now our email or invoice has been sent. And so what this allows us to do is now when I look at the deal, right, I can actually come in and I can see that an invoice has been sent, right, for a certain amount on a certain date. But it's not just in the deal that I can see it. So if I jump over to the contact who was the recipient of that invoice, it'll show up for them as well. And then last but not least, if I go up to the account level, we'll see that that invoice will show here as well. So if you have multiple contacts, multiple deals, all these different estimates and invoices going out, you can rest assured that you can always go up to the account level and see everything that's going on with that account, regardless of where it's actually happening in CRM. And then on the flip side here, if I look inside of books, currently I have our all invoices here, which is empty. If I give that a refresh, uh, we should see that now we have one invoice in here, right? So it just automatically and immediately creates it on the book side. 
If I open up this invoice, I want to just highlight a few things that you can do from in here. So up in the top right, you can actually see there's a tiny, tiny little logo for the CRM. And from that, if you've created this invoice from a deal, it'll actually show it right in here. So you don't have to do any guessing about what this was sent for. Uh, you can actually just see it natively directly inside of Zoho Books. And if we jump up to the customer level, of course, we'll see that that invoice already exists here as well. But we'll also see a little CRM tab that references us right back to Zoho CRM. So it kind of connects the dots between these two systems and allows you to, whether you're in books, whether you're in CRM, you can always see all these different deals and contact people and transactional records that you are using in the system. So with that, I think we can wrap up our walkthrough for today. Again, kind of hitting some of those key items where you'll need to first understand how the sync works, um, determine which records should be synced and how you want to manage those duplicate entries. Uh, figure out any filters that you want on those accounts and contacts before you pull them all to Zoho Books. Get your field mapping set up so that your information can flow easily between the systems. And then lastly, actually take it for a spin and use it to run your business. And with that, I really do hope that this video is useful for you. If it was, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that lets us know that videos like this are valuable for you all. Um, and if you do have any feedback or questions, please leave those in the comments section down below as we do try to review and respond to every single one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.